Hello, mic test. Good morning. Good morning, MPTC family. I hope you are traveled here to this beautiful parish of Santa Maria Goretti was well, and that we are ready to receive all of the blessings and enlightenment that this morning offers us. And to start us off, I'd like to call out Sec Babes, our president and CEO of MPTC. Thank you. Thank you very much, Attorney Joy. Uh, let me, uh, first of all, welcome and thank all of you for giving your time this morning. It's really your showing our love and devotion to our Lord. Uh, it's been rapid and tumble, busy all these days, but sabi nga namin, I talked to Luigi, Luigi, time out muna tayo for this Holy Week. Uh, magkaroon naman tayo ng konting recollection. So, luckily for us, that's why I had to see Father Jason and thank him really for giving us his time this morning. So, let's give Father Jason a big hand. Uh, thank you, Father Jason. Uh, I, I just hope that uh, with this morning's recollection and by God's grace, only by God's grace, we can, we can find ways to be able to express our devotion to Him this Holy Week. Uh, using our time, resources, talent, energy, it would be good for us to show our love to our Lord during this Holy Week. And hopefully, not just during the Holy Week, but beyond. Uh, I'm almost sure that you have friends, you have families, you have colleagues who are carrying heavier crosses than you are. If there's a way that you can help lift their heavy crosses so that somehow you're able to convey the love of God to your colleagues, friends, especially those who are experiencing health issues, financial issues, or even relationship issues. So again, um, thank you, Father Jason, for showing us, uh, giving us your time in spite of the heavy schedule. And of course, during Holy Week, all of them are in demand, very busy. Um, so welcome to all of you at uh, magandang umaga sa inyo lahat. Thank you, Sir Babes. Okay, we, I'd like to have a moment to introduce our recollection speaker. Our recollection speaker is Reverend Father Jason Hobilia Laguerta, Ph.D., and he is the parish priest of Santa Maria Goretti Parish, Pius XII, here in Paco, Manila. He is also the Episcopal Vicar for the implementation of the Roman Catholic Archdiocese of Manila Roadmap with the theme, Finding God in Scriptures and in Human Experience. Let us all give a round of applause to Father Jason Laguerta. Yeah, good morning, everybody. Yeah, for those of you who are here. But uh, we are also having some participants online. So I'd like to involve them also in our reflection this morning. Uh, let us begin with a short prayer. You may just remain seated and let us dispose ourselves to prayer to recognize the Lord's presence among us in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Lord Jesus, we have entered your final days as we commemorate the Holy Week. We would like to journey with you, O God. Help us to stay with you. Many of us falter and forget. There are times that we do not appreciate the sacrifice you have done for us. This Holy Week, Lord, in spite of our busyness, in spite of the many things that we need to attend to, open our hearts, open our mind and eyes to see you walking with us, spending your final moments with us. We ask you, Lord, to give us the humility of heart and courage as well so that we can stay with you in your journey 
so that we can walk with you in your final mile, so that we can carry your cross together with you. We entrust to you our families, our work, our workplace. We entrust to you our journey in life. And we ask you also, Lord, to sustain us, strengthen us, make us more committed to you in spite of our fragilities and weaknesses. Help us to be faithful and loyal. Help us not to abandon you, especially in these moments of need. We ask you, Lord, to forgive us for our many transgressions and sins, and we beg you also to shower upon us your merciful love, your merciful heart, and the abundance of your kindness and compassion. We come to you sinners that we are, ungrateful that we are. We beg for your forgiveness. We beg for your mercy. We ask all this in Jesus' name. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. So good morning, everybody. Natatakot ako, nandito si Secretary Babes, eh, kaya hindi ko na... Sa, sa, sa totoo lang po, madalas confident ako magsalita, eh, pero sa harap ng isang dakilang tao, eh, kinakabahan po ako. Secretary Babes po, di ba, umuwi ka muna. Ta. <laughs> yeah. Thank you, Luigi, ha. Pinahamak mo ko, no? Ayos-ayos uh, ng buhay ko dito sa Santa Maria Goretti, eh. Tapos, ayan, ginugulo niyo ko, eh. <laughs> But, I, but we are happy. We are very happy and grateful that you are here and we would like to journey together. And let me just rephrase a bit our theme for this morning. Yes, it's about finding God, finding the Lord, but I would rather uh, call it uh, in relation, in connection with your, <laughs> with your, uh, with your line of work, uh, on the road with Jesus. So let's meditate on that. On the road with Jesus, and basically, what's that's what the Stations of the Cross uh, are about. No? The Stations of the Cross are the different, uh, let's say, uh, markers and uh, milestones in the last moments of Jesus as he walked, or rather, as he carried his cross on the way to Calvary. So, on the road to Jesus, because alam ko po. After nitong recollection na to, takbo na naman kayo sa inyong mga trabaho dahil kailangan kayo doon. Mag-uuwi na ang mga tao sa mga probinsya kaya. <laughs> kung, kung kailan naman Holy Week na dapat nagdadasal kayo, yun, trabaho naman kayo. But it's okay. There should be people who would be, who would be uh, manning our so-called stations. And I think it's a beautiful word, station. I think for some of us, we don't realize that station, stations of the cross, or uh, or our own workstation, we think that is about work or about the things that we, we should do. But if you go back to the word statio, statio in Latin, statio means stop. You have to stop. Kaya nga yung tollway or ang toll gate, hindi naman yan para magbayad ka eh. Because kasama na dun yung, kasama na dun yung tribute, kasama na dun yung tax. But actually, when you stop in a toll or when you stop in a station, it's basically to, to, uh, for you to be able to be in touch with where you are on the road at that moment. So, stats your station means you stop, you pause. That's why prayer is also called station. Stations of the cross would refer basically to uh, here in the church, we have different stations of the cross. We have uh, pictures and, and visuals. But it's not really the prayer that you utter or that, that you say in the station. The station of the cross is really more about you stop there and linger and relish as much as you can no? the, uh, the pause. So what we are doing this morning would be some sort of a statio, a station, 
a moment to pause, a moment to stop. In our business, in the very busy NLEX and, uh, and Kalax. Galing pa lang ako sa Kalax, Kalax nung Saturday, no? And uh, uh, nag-exit ako sa may silang, no? and then, and then uh, diretso ako ng Tagaytay or ng Alfonso. And uh, yan. So, ang sarap sa, uh, sa expressway kasi mabilis. Pero sa dulo, titigil ka. At yun, na, nandun yung toll gate. <laughs> Pero tingin ko ha, ang toll gate or ang tollway, ang tingin ko importante yun eh. Not for the bayad, but really more for the moment the a driver on the road has time to stop. Kasi, nagkumpisal na ako kanina kay uh, Sir Babes, no? Uh, pag nasa expressway ako at nakamotor ako, nagwa 140 ako dyan. <laughs> <laughs> Naka big bike po kasi ako. <laughs> At minsan, de, pag ako po mag-isa, 100 lang po. Mabait po ako pag ako lang mag-isa or one, 120 na pinakamalakas. No? Pero pagkakasama ko po yung ibang mga pare na nagra-ride, ay maiiwan ka eh. Kapag, uh, yan, no? pag nagwalwal na sila, ayan, tapos ka na. <laughs> Rider po kasi ako, kaya, ay, <laughs> kaya tuloy, pasensya na ha, kung kayo naabuso ko ang inyo. <laughs> <laughs> At pag, alam nyo ba yung mga rider, alam na nila kung may mga ano kayo dyan, may mga camera kayo. Alam na, alam na namin yan, no? Kaya pag kasi na nilang may ganyan na, oh, tumigil na muna kayo kasi may camera na dyan. <laughs> yeah. Kaya siguro wala kayo nahuhuli kasi alam na nila kung nasan yung camera nyo, eh, no? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I think this is a learning experience for you, ha? <laughs> uh, but levity aside, you know, I, I think I think in, in the way of life, in the in a road to life and in life, we we really have we really go so fast. And I myself have to admit to that that I go so fast in life that sometimes someone or something has to remind me, stop. Stop. You're you're going 140, 150. Uh yung motor ko po hindi kaya yung two hundred kaya. Okay na yun. <laughs> but you know, sometimes there are moments that we need really to to find a tall way to stop. And this is what we are doing this morning. On the road with Jesus to the cross, let us make some stops and discover some some stories on the road. Yan. Is it okay na ano po tayo? Tigil tayo? Konti, no? sa inyo pong mga trabaho and maybe for um, for an hour or less maybe hindi naman po one hour ito maiksi lang po ito kasi hindi po ako madaldal eh uh, sa totoo lang 30 minutes lang po ako nagsasalita introduction ko 30 minutes no and then, <laughs> pag ginanahan na ako tatlong oras na mahina yon no? <laughs> kaya let's let's stop for a moment and let us try to encounter people on the road with Jesus. So I'll be offering to you some, some companions in the journey on the road together with Jesus. Now, if you, uh, may isa pong bishop, si Bishop Baron, sabi niya, Robert Baron, sabi niya, I think the best way to appreciate the Holy Week is not to make it very academic or make it very theological, the best way to appreciate the Holy Week is to enter into the story. The story of Jesus himself and the story of the people who walk with him, beginning in Galilee and towards Jerusalem. So, where did the journey begin? The journey of Jesus from Galilee to Jerusalem. Let me somehow describe to you the story which we can find in the scriptures. And maybe also this uh, Holy Week, it would be good also if one way or another you go back to the scriptures. Just, you know, just look at the story of Jesus and how did he get there in Jerusalem. So, first of all, we have to identify the geography or the topography of Oh, or whatnot of the of the Holy Land. Uh, can you raise your hand if you have been to the Holy Land? Holy Land po. Ayan, very good. Bakit yung 99% hindi ba? Eh, dapat pumunta kayo lahat dun, no? Kasi Kristiyano tayo. We are Christians and we should go there. 
Ah, kung yung mga Muslim nga nagpupunta ng Mecca once in their life, dapat tayo. Ako yun po ang advocacy namin ni Father Dave. <laughs> si Father Dave po, presidente ng, ano, ng uh, Catholic Travel. No? So, he, he leads many pilgrimages. I do also. I lead pilgrimages also. And for me, my personal advocacy is to bring everyone to the Holy Land. Because they describe the Holy Land as the fifth gospel. So we have four Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. But if you go to the Holy Land, you will be able to read the Gospels through the eyes of the fifth Gospel, which is basically the land. So magbibigay po kami ng 50% discount sa Holy Land ngayon. No? <laughs> yung mga magtatangka <laughs> pero wala pa ho hindi pa pinapayagan ngayon no? kasi nga sa, uh, sa Hamas and you know nangyayari sa Gaza Strip no? but we pray we pray by the way for peace in the Holy Land sana makabalik na ang mga pilgrims to the Holy Land kasi for me as a priest after uh, pilgrimages to the Holy Land ang dali-dali na ho ipaliwanag yung kwento once they get to see the land. Kaalam niyo po yan kayo, mga engineers and architects and those working on the road. Hindi pwedeng i-eyeball mo lang sa camera or hindi mo lang pwedeng tingnan sa, uh, sa, sa video or what. You really have to go there and look at the lay of the land. Hindi mo lang pwedeng tingnan lang sa... Okay, may CCTV naman tayo all around, di ba? Ilan ho bang CCTV sa inyong... <laughs> Ay, sorry. Yung security, ano pala yan? <laughs> Saan ba yung mga ano, speed, ano nyo? <laughs> Saan ba banda yan? <laughs> yan? Hindi ho pwedeng hanggang camera lang tayo, no? If you are, if you are a diligent, uh, let's say, guardian of the road, you are not settled or you are not satisfied with just viewing it from the, from the, from the box. You have to see it with your own eyes. Ang engineer po na, well, ang engineer na tumitingin sa, uh, sa, ano, sa camera, okay naman po yun. Pero hindi niya talaga makikita yung problema ng, ng daan kung hindi niya titinan talaga. So you really have to see the lay of the land. And I think the best way to appreciate the story of Jesus and the best way to appreciate the story of our faith, go to the Holy Land para akong nasa tourism board, no? So, you have to go to the... to see it with your own eyes para maintindihan mo yung sinasabi about Sea of Galilee, para pag sinabi sa'yo na Jerusalem, pag sinabi sa'yo na Samaria, Bethany, sinabi sa'yo na ito ang, uh, ito ang Magdala, ito ang, ito ang Bethsaida, ito ang... Yeah. So, you're able to, to see it with your own eyes. So, nevertheless, okay lang po yun na hindi pa kayo nakakapunta. Yan. So, ang Catholic Travel nag-offer ng 50% discount kung gusto nyo. Pero kayo-kayo lang, ha? Hindi kami sasama doon, no? <laughs> Kasi medyo delikado pa. Anyway, so, let's lay the land and the story of the land. If we go to the Gospel of John, the Gospel of John has two major, major parts. Well, my, my prologue at my epilogue, pero meron siyang two major parts. The two major parts would be the Book of Signs, which would be from 2 to 12, chapters 2 to 12, and then the Book of Glory, chapter 13 and, and beyond, up to 20. So, if you want to start somewhere in reading the Bible, you may want to start with John, John, the Gospel of John, because uh, the, uh, John explains it, well, in a very, you know, theological way, but also in a very, um, in a very exciting way a suspense-filled way because he gives you a lot of stories about what happened to Jesus. Let me just cut the story kasi pag ginuwento ko mula Bethlehem hanggang Calvary, medyo matagal po yun. No? Lalo pa pag sinimulan natin sa Genesis hanggang Revelation. So, medyo mahaba yan. Medyo kailangan ng oras po yan. But, but let me cut short the story. Let's just take a, a, a portion of it. Let's start with, uh, with Caesarea Philippi. So, this is how the Holy Land looks like. There is a northern region, north, and there is the southern region. So north, south, yan eh. North and south, ang, ang Holy Land. So north is Galilee. In between north and south is Samaria. That's the middle portion. And then the southern region is Judea. 
Judea, the capital of Judea is Jerusalem. So put that in your mental map. North is Galilee, and then Samaria, the land of the Samaritans, kaway ng mga Hudyo, and then south will be Judea. And Judea is composed of Jerusalem and the desert. Napakalaking disyerdo po niyan. Negev Desert. Hanggang Egypt na po yan. Hanggang Egypt. Yan. I-google nyo na lang ngayon kung meron kayo ano, para makita nyo. So, north and then south. Ito po yung kwento ni Jesus. Pinanganak po siya sa Bethlehem, somewhere in the south, pero lumaki siya sa north, which is in Nazareth. Nazareth is in the Galilean region. So, uh, pinanganak sa south, pero tumira sa north, sa Nazareth. 30 years siya sa Nazareth, 30 years in Nazareth. And then in his 30th year, after the baptism of John, ang baptism naman ni John na nandun naman sa my south. So, yeah. so, and then he went to Capernaum and uh, made his headquarters in Capernaum. Capernaum is in the north, in the region of Galilee, near the Sea of Galilee. Yan. Kung napunta na po kayo ng Holy Land, yung po, di ba, yung napunta kayo ng Capernaum, yun po yung malapit sa dagat, somewhere in the north. So Jesus made His headquarters in Capernaum, and on the third year of His ministry, yung pangatlong taon niya na sa kanyang ministry, that's where He decided to go to Jerusalem. Now, in the synoptic version, Matthew, Mark, and Luke, Jesus made one journey to Jerusalem, to the south. In the Gospel of John, Jesus made several, but it doesn't matter. What matters is the journey of Jesus is from the north to the south. Because Jerusalem is in the south. So beginning with Caesarea Philippi, in Caesarea Philippi, he was with his disciples and he was asking them, who do people say that I am? And then the disciples answered, You are John the Baptist, you are Elijah, you are Jeremiah, you are one of the prophets. And then Jesus asked again his disciples, But who do you say that I am? And then Peter said to Jesus, Lord, you are the Christ, the Messiah. You are the Son of the living God. And Jesus told Peter, No, Peter, nobody, nobody, uh, uh, you did not. Now, know it on your own. It has been revealed to you by my Father. And then, you are the rock. And then, upon this rock, I will build my church. So, this is the start of the journey of Jesus to Jerusalem. When, finally, at that moment, he realized, okay, they are ready. Kasi tatlong taon niyang pinanday, hinulma, yung kanyang mga alagad. He traveled with them. He performed miracles before them. You know, in the Sea of Galilee, and dami niyang mga pinagaling na may sakit. In the, one of the areas and corners of the Sea of Galilee, uh, he multiplied the bread in Tabga. I don't know if you have been there. And, uh, in the multiplication of loaves. And in, three, in the three years that Jesus was in Galilee, he was so active. Performing miracles left and right, preaching to people, and he was gaining a lot of followers. Sikat na sikat sa madaling salita si Jesus sa north. Sa norte kilala siya ng lahat ng mga tao. Thousands, by the hundreds of thousands, in fact, they would come to him. Not just those coming from the Galilean region, but even as far as Lebanon and Syria, even farther north. Yung Tyre and Sidon, hindi part ng Galileon. That's a heathen region, the pagan region of Libya, of, 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 uh, of Syria and Lebanon. So, Jesus was so popular in Galilee. And in Caesarea Philippi, this is the northernmost region of Galilee, he decided that he would now go down south together with his disciples. So, naglakbay po si Jesus from the north, and then dumaan sila ng Samaria. Nung dadaan na sila ng Samaria, pinalaya sila ng mga Samaritan. Oh, pupunta pala kayo ng Jerusalem, ha? Ay, hindi kayo pwedeng dumaan dito. Nagalit yung mga alagad sa, sa mga taga-Samaritan, uh, Samaria, sabi niyang mga alagad kay, ano, kay Jesus, gunawin mo na nga yung ano na yan, ayaw tayong papasukin eh. Na sabi ni Lord, wag na, wag na, wag yung patulan, no? Kaya ang ginawa ni Jesus, kasi ang Samaria nasa gitna, so from Galilee, iwas siya sa, sa Samaria, umikot siya, kaya napunta siya ng Jericho. 
Kasi yung Jericho, yun naman yung the, the, the town before you go up to Jerusalem. And in between the travel of Jesus between the north and the south was Mount Tabor. If you're familiar again with the lay of the land, Mount Tabor is the mountain range that divides the north and the south. Para siyang natural barrier ng north and south. Sa so kung again, kung nakapunta mo kayo ng Holy Land, aakitin mo yung Mount Tabor, makikita mo yung Jezreel Valley, makikita mo yung hills and valleys of the Galilean region. But if you go to the south, makikita mo rin yun ng, ang bundok ng Jerusalem. Because Jerusalem is a mountain. It's like Baguio. Aakitin mo yan. So from the north, Jesus goes, stop over ng Mount Tabor, inakyat nila yung bundok, and he was transfigured in Mount Tabor together with his three disciples, Peter, James, and John. And then Peter said again to the Lord, Lord, it is so good to be here in the mountain. Let us build three tents here. One for you, one for Moses, one for Elijah. But the Lord said to Peter, rebuke him, said, no, 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 Peter, we need to go. We need to go down to, we need to go far. You know, we need to go down from the mountain and we need, go, we need to go forward to Jerusalem because my mission is not just here in Galilee, but I am meant to go to Jerusalem. So they con continued the journey and then arrived at Jericho. Jericho is the town that is at the foot of the mountain of Jerusalem. Ayan. So yung po yung lowest point of earth, yung Jericho. At doon sila nagsimulang umakyat. Sana nga nakapunta na kayo kasi para madaling ikwento ito eh, no? Pero nevertheless, <laughs> yan. So, are you still with me? Are, are you with me? Yan. So, kinukwento ko lang po sa inyo yung ano muna, yung lay of the land. Mamaya yung mga tao na. Yan. And as Jesus journeyed and entered Jericho, that's where he met Bartimaeus, the blind man. After the healing of Bartimaeus, Jesus said, It's time. So from Jericho, together with hundreds and thousands of people from Galilee, Jesus started ascending to Jerusalem. Paakyat. So sa kwento po, ito po yung very dramatic about it. Jesus gained thousands of followers from their Galilean region, from the north. And now, Jesus decides to go to Jerusalem. Tuwan-tuwa yung mga taga-north. Tuwan-tuwa ang mga probinsyano. Yan. So, ang original probinsyano po si Jesus. Kasi na, ang, ang Galilean region is province. Rural. The, the religious center of, 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 of the Jewish life was Jerusalem. Power was there. Pilate was there, Herod was there, all powers that be were in Jerusalem. And now you will understand that in the journey from the north to the south, from Galilee to Jerusalem, in the mind of the apostles, in the mind of the many of his followers, here comes Jesus from the north, will conquer the south, overthrow the Romans, eliminate Herod, declare himself king, and because he is king, we will be in the best position. Kaya nga nagtatalo si James and John eh. Nagtatalo si James and John, tsaka yung other disciples, the ten. Kasi ang sabi ni James and John, sabi ng nanay ni James and John, Lord, pag nasa power ka na, iligay mo yung mga anak ko sa kaliwa at kanan ha. E nung narinig ng ibang mga alagad to, sabi nila, ang kakapal na mukha ng mga yan, no? Hindi pa nga tayo nagiging hari. Hindi pa nga tayo ang na, 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 nananalo eh. Nagbibilang na agad ng itlog. Yeah, so, ganun yung uh, ganun ang usapan nila. So, and, and, and you know what? Jesus was already going to Jerusalem. They were still arguing about who is the greatest among them. Kasi nga, in their mind, Jesus would go to Jerusalem in order to overthrow the Romans and make himself king. Patatal si King si Herod. And Herod, by the way, was not really a Jewish king. Herod was an Edomite. An Edomite is someone who lived in the present-day Jordan. Petra. Ayan. Kung lapunta na po kayo ng Jordan sa Petra, tagaroon si Herodes, taga Petra. 
Pero dahil nga nakabilis, nabili niya ang mga Romano, he bought himself into power and so he became king. And even the Jews themselves did not like Herod. Pero wala siya na magawa kasi siya ang nakaluklok at inuluklok ng mga Romano. So, this is the context. The context is a political king who would come and take over Jerusalem. Are you with me? Yan po yung context ng Osana to the son of David sa Palm Sunday. The context of Palm Sunday is, bakit sila yung mahawak ng palms? Bakit sila may nagsasabi ng Osana, Osana to the son of David? Remember, David ang sinisigaw nila. Why David? Kasi David is the greatest king. And after David, wala nang pumalit na hari kay David. Oo, sinikap ni Solomon, anak ni David, pero what happened to Solomon? He started so well in his reign as king, pero in the end, he had 800 wives <laughs> and concubines. He also fell from grace. Imagine mo si Solomon, di ba? Siya na yung pinaka-wises of the kings. But he also fell from grace. And eventually what? He was also, uh, he has fallen from grace. And, and the next kings eventually were all bad kings. No more king. For the, for, the, for the people, for the Jewish people, it was really terrible. Because those were the days when they were still longing for David and they had no more king. And they were still under the Roman occupation. And remember, in the history of the Jews, they were conquered by the Assyrians, by the Babylonians, by the Greeks, by the Romans. One after another. There is never a time in their life that they were never conquered. There's always somebody who would capture their land. No? Kaya siguro, again, pag napunta kayo ng Holy Land, ang mga Hudyo talagang walang tiwala sa iyo yan. No? Kasi ang tingin nila sa iyo, you will conquer and get their land. Yeah, pero let's, let's leave it aside. Political na ngayon yan. No? Pero again, going back to the time of Jesus, the context of the Palm Sunday procession was what? Political. Jesus comes to overthrow the Romans. Jesus comes to take over the city of Jerusalem. Sinagay nila sa asno. They wanted to put him on a horse, but Jesus preferred that he would be put on an ass, on a colt, on a donkey. Ah, doon na sila nagtaka. Doon na sila nagsimulang magtaka. Kasi normally, if you are to assault a city and you are the general in command, you ride a horse. But Jesus chose a donkey, which is an animal symbolizing not war, but peace. Pero sige, sige, usana pa rin. Usana sila. Usana, usana to the son of David. Uh, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Yan. So, tuwan-tuwa sila. Sino po yung mga nagbubunyi ng usana? Mga taga-Galilea. Mga fans ni Jesus. Kasi hindi naman siya taga-Jerusalem taga, taga eh. Hindi naman siya kilala ng mga taga-Jerusalem eh. They were all Galileans. Mostly Galileans. From the north. Siguro sinasabi ng mga tao noon, no? andito na, nagbabalik na ang lawin, no? para sa kupi nila. <laughs> eh, e, na-frustrate sila. They got so frustrated because, teka, teka, teka muna. Bakit parang ang lamya? No? Bakit parang una sumakay sa donkey? Pangalawa yung donkey, hiniram lang. Eh, paano ka naman igagalang ng mga, ano, di ba? Paano mo ipapakiti yung force mo and power mo kung pagpunta mo dun, una, nang hiram ka ng donkey. Pangalawa, donkey pa talaga sinakyan mo. Doon nagsimula, no? Doon na nagsimula yung pagdududa, pag-aalinlangan. Of course, Jesus went inside the Temple of Jerusalem and then he over, you know, yun, nagwala siya doon sa templo, pina, pinalayas niya yung mga, uh, mga money changers and all that. So, na-impress sila doon, pero not so much, kasi tuluyan mo na kasi. At yun ang inuudyok sa kanya ng mga tao. Tuluyan mo na. Lead us to battle. Lead us to conquer and capture the city. But Jesus was offering to them another kind of kingship and another kind of kingdom which they could not understand. 
So are, are you with me? Are you still with me? Yeah. So, Holy Monday, it was supposed to be Holy Monday. Pumasok si Jesus sa temple, and then dun niya pinaalis yung mga money changers. At nag-meeting na ang Sanhedrin. Nag-meeting na ang mga Jewish leaders. Sabi nila, nabalitaan namin. Nagkagulo ang buong Jerusalem eh. Nung pumasok nung Sunday eh, nung Palm Sunday, nagkagulo ang buong Jerusalem. Naku, sino yan? And it was Feast of the Passover. Ang dami-daming mga tao din. Feast of the Passover. So, sabi ng mga Sanhedrin. Ang Sanhedrin, yung po yung parang ruling class ng, uh, ng mga Hudyo at that time. They were, the, they, were the, uh, they were the Supreme Court, they were the Jewish leaders, and all that. Nag-meeting sila. Sabi ng mga ng Sanhedrin, lalo na ng high priest, ni na Caiaphas, ni na Anas, at ng iba pang mga pinuno ng mga Hudyo, dumating na siya. Nabalitaan na natin yung mamang to sa norte. Eh. Pero nung nasa norte siya, okay lang, nasa north ka naman eh. So hindi, sa, hindi sila threatened. They were not threatened by Jesus because Jesus was just where? Going around Galilee in the northern region. Okay lang yan. At least nasa probinsya ka. E pumasok ng Jerusalem. Ayun. They felt threatened and they were very much envious of Jesus. Nag, na, ingit na ingit sila kasi ang dami-dami ng mga tao na sumusunod kay Jesus. And ito yung clincher para sa kanila. Si Jesus pinagaling o oh, binuhay yung patay na si Lazaro. Si Lazaro ay nakatira sa Betania. Ang Betania ay dalawang kilometro lang ang layo sa Jerusalem. So si Jesus, wala naman siyang bahay sa Jerusalem, uh, tumutuloy siya sa Betani. E namatay si Lazaro. Ang ginawa ni Jesus, binuhay si Lazaro. At nabalitaan ng mga Hudyo, na bumubuhay ng patay ito, all the more that they were threatened by Jesus. So Jesus now is a threat to them. Jesus needs to be stopped. Jesus needs to be killed. Naintindihan niyo po natin yung kwento. Ang sabi ng mga Hudyo, may tulog tayo sa mamang to. Pag naging very popular to at maging naging hari ito, tapos tayo nito. Mabawala tayo sa pwesto. Paano na yung kayamanan natin? Paano na negosyo natin? So, they plotted against Jesus. So, hindi nila, ma, hindi nila malapitan si Jesus kasi ang daming mga taong taga-suporta kay Jesus. Hindi naman na pwedeng i-assassinate ng gano'n-gano'n na lang. So, ano ginawa nila? Nag-isip ng paraan para daming ano eh, daming nakapaligid, mahirap i-set up. Pag hinuli mo in front of people, may riot yan, Passover yan, ang daming tao, magkakagulo. Eh, huwag ganyan, huwag ganyan. So, nag-meeting ang Sunday Dream. Nag-meeting din ba kayo kagaya ng ganito? Na pinagpaplatuhan niyo yung iba? <laughs> yung ginawa ng ano. <laughs> di ba sa politika, laging ganyan, di ba? Nagpaplano sila. No? Paano natin patatalisikin yung kalaban natin? Paano natin? Pam. Yan. Anyway, it was really political. Very political. And at the same time, religious. Kasi pumasok na yung mga religious leaders. So, anong gagawin natin? Pag hinuli natin, magkakagulo. Maraming mga supporter. Baka mag sa Malacan. mag sa... Huwag <laughs> natin pumunta din, no? Ah, sabi nila. May isang alagad si Jesus. Mukhang pwede. Natunugan nila na isa sa mga alagad ni Jesus ay mandarambong. Kaya sabi nila, madaling makuha yan. Yeah, natinugan nila na si Jesus pala ay may alagad na ang pangalan ay Judas. Si Judas po ay ang treasurer. At si Judas, ang gawain ni Judas, hindi ko na alam si Jesus, ang dami-dami namang piliing treasurer. Si Judas pa talaga na makati ang kamay. 
yung gospel kanina, kung nagsimba po kayo kanina ng umaga, si Mary of Bethany, kapatid ni Lazaro, binuhusan si Jesus ng ano, di ba? Isang litro ng pabango. Ang sabi ni Judas, yan tayo eh. Isang litro, ibubuhos mo. Ang sayang yan. Eh kasi yung isang litro ng pabango, sabi ni Judas, isang taon ang katumbas niyan, tapos sinayang mo lang sa paa. <laughs> hinayang na hinayang si Judas sa paa eh. <laughs> kasi binuhos ni, ni Mary of Bethany yung, <laughs> yung, ano, yung, uh, uh, yung aromatic oil, yung, uh, yung pabango sa paa ni Jesus. Talagang binuhos ang litro. Sabi ni Judas, tayo eh, nagsasayang tayo ng pere eh. At sabi ni John, na, sa ating ibanghelyo kanina, hindi naman ta dahil nang hinayang siya na kesyo ibibigay sa, sa mga mahirap. Ang <laughs> ano ni Judas eh, eh sayang yan eh. Pwede ko pang makupit dyan eh. <laughs> yan. So si Judas ang kanilang naging paraan para... Yan. Talaga, no? Pagpera talaga. Kapatid, pagpera... Oh, kano ka? Kano presyo mo? Siguro naghahagal pa sila. Sabi siguro ni Judas, eh, bumubuhay ng patay tong manok ko. Hindi pwedeng cheap lang yan. Sabi siguro ni Judas, sandaan. <laughs> 100 silver pieces. Sobra ka naman, masyado naman. Ano yan? Si Cesar, si Cesar ba yan? Pagkabala, pagkataasas na yan. Sabi siguro ni ano, 20. Sabi ng ano? Ano yun? 20. Baba-baba niya, no? 70. Hanggang sila, ano, 30. <laughs> na, siguro, na, hanggang 30 sila. 30 ang napagkasunduan nila. Kaya yung mga mahilig sa 30 dito, yan, nako. <laughs> Imagine mo, pagbenta mo ka, Panginoon mo ng 30 silver pieces. Pero nevertheless, ayun, kaya nila nahuli si Jesus. Kasi hindi nila kilala si Jesus eh. They don't know Him because He is in, from Galilee and uh, He's popular in Galilee but not in Jerusalem. Eh, wala naman mga picture dati, wala naman mga Instagram dati, kaya hindi naman nila... In fact, kaya hindi sila... Uh, hindi nila gaan nung kilala si Jesus kasi merong kakambal si Jesus si Thomas Thomas the twin kaya twin ang tawag kay Thomas kasi kamukha siya ni Jesus so hindi nila alam sino dyan si Jesus yeah, okay. mamaya si Thomas ang mahuli natin so anyway so we needed someone talaga talaga makapagturo na siya yan nako magingat kayo sa mga kaibigan niya na mahilig mag ganyan magtuturo no? Ah, hindi ako siya. <laughs> Ay, ako, mahirap po may ganyan. <laughs> Parang, <laughs> pag may makasama tayo sa trabaho na hindi inaamin yung mali nila at lagi nagtuturo, ako, mag-ingat na kayo dyan. <laughs> Kasi, <laughs> de, may tulog tayo dyan, delikado tayo dyan. So, si Judas naman, 30 silver pieces, sabi, okay na ako, okay na ako dyan. Okay na ako sa 30 silver pieces. Thursday, yun, Ah, uh, ito ha. Ang hilig niyan pagkatapos kumain magdasal. So imagine mo si Judas, no? Talagang sasabihin yung business secret ni Jesus sa mga Romano, sa mga punong pare. Imagine mo merong ganung kan business partner na ang business secret niyo binibigay sa lahat. Nakaranas na ba kayo ng ganun? Business partner mo? pinagkatiwalaan mo, trusted partner mo, tapos yung business secret mo, kung saan-saan na pala pinamigay. Ayan, mga Judas ang tawag dyan. <laughs> so si Judas, sabi sa mga punong pari at mga ano, ayan, ang itong master ko, ang hilig-hilig niyan, ganito. Pakatapos kumain yan, paggabi na, pupunta sa isang sulok yan, garden or whatsoever, magdadasal yan. O doon yung puntahan. So, eh, isang garden. O yun, may garden doon. Gethsemane. Binigay na yung location. Hindi pa na contento yung... Hindi kami sigurado, baka mamaya iba madampot namin. O, sabi ni Hulas, o sige, sige. Kung sino yung halikan ko, yung kunin nyo. Diba, ganun ka? Judas, whatever happened to you? My goodness. 
three years ka na pinakain, pinagkatiwalaan, three years ka na kasama mo si Jesus, day and night. Tapos ngayon, 30 silver pieces, and then, halikan mo ba? Okay na sana yung sinabi niya, di ba? O, describe ko na lang sa inyo. Yun na nga akong pakialaman. Binayaran nyo na eh. So, describe ko na lang siya na ganito. Ang itsura niyan, long hair, siguro may bagbas, siguro ganyan. Hindi niya eh. Hindi niya nakontento sa description lang eh. Kailangang ano, kailangang halikan niya talaga. Kaya mag-ingat kayo sa mga mahalik sa inyo ha. Kasi... <laughs> kasi minsan pag umahalik sa'yo di mo alam kung ano ba yan kiss of love ba yan o kiss of betrayal yan you know, why did you come to me so Matthew 26.15 if you want to go to the scriptural reference Matthew 26.15 uh, Judas sold Jesus for 30 silver pieces so let's okay tapos na po ang aking introduction Sabi ko sa inyo eh, introduction pa lang yun eh. Now we go to the story. The story of Judas. Judas was one of the twelve. Iscariot, meaning he is from a place called Iscariot. And Iscariot, sabi nila, is, uh, uh, is somewhere in Greece or something. You know? and, uh, and Judas is one of the more learned disciples of Jesus. Kung tutuusin, si Judas, according to tradition, siya yung isa sa mga alagad na mas matalino. Si na Pedro Santiago I, mga mag- mangingisda lahat yan eh. Hindi nga hindi ano nakapag-aral. Si Judas, mas sophisticated. Together with Matthew. Si Matthew, tax collector eh. So definitely, mathematician yun. At saka magician. Magician din yun kasi <laughs> magaling mag-magic ng tax. No? So, Matthew and Judas, they were the two bright, uh, kumbaga sa mga bright boys of Congress, si Judas at Matthew ang bright boys no? of Jesus. So, nagtiwala si Jesus sa kanya sa pera. Kasi nga, magaling sa pera eh. So, sa kanya pinagkatiwala ni Jesus yung kaperahan ng kanyang grupo. Siyempre, kaysa kailangan naman nilang kumain, kailangan din nilang matulog, kailangan din nilang bumili ng damit, so kailangan mayroong nangangalaga. No? He was the treasurer. But he sold out Jesus. He sold him out for 30 silver pieces. But I think the more interesting story of Judas is, let me read it to you. In Matthew 27, yan, I think this is the more interesting part of the story of uh, Judas. Kasi binenta niya ng 30 silver pieces. But when Judas, this is 27 verse 3, when Judas, his betrayer, saw that he was condemned, Jesus was condemned, Judas repented and brought back the 30 pieces of silver to the chief priests and the elders, saying, I have sinned in betraying innocent blood. They said, what is that to us? See to it yourself. And throwing down the pieces of silver in the temple, he departed. And he went and hung himself. But the chief priest, taking the pieces of silver, said, it is not lawful to put them into the treasury since they are blood money. So they took counsel and brought with them the potter's field and, and brought with them the potter's field to bury strangers in and bought with them the porter's field to bury strangers in. Nagsisi si Judas. He repented when he saw that they arrested Jesus. Siguro ang akala ni Judas, ano lang eh, kumbaga, ikukulong lang, 
papalayain din, eh, tinuluyan. At ang sabi ni Judas, sinosole ko na yung 30 silver pieces. Iyoko na niyan. I'm sorry for what I did. Please, please. Soli ko na to. Bigyan niyo na sa akin yung master ko. <laughs> Masaya ka. <laughs> Masaya ka. Kita mo yung, yung agony ni Judas. Eh. He, he threw the pieces of silver sa mga punong pare. Hindi, hindi niya tinanggap eh. Hindi niya tinanggap yung bayad. Pinagsisihan niya yung kanyang kasalanan. But he could not take it. You know, he could not take the betrayal that he has done. So he went out and hung himself. Saklap, no? Um, best friend mo for three years. Binenta mo ng 30 silver pieces. Pinagsisihan mo. Binalik mo yung bayad. Pero... Wala eh. What is done is done. And so, he could not settle with himself. And Judas ended it in tragedy. So, si, si Judas ang first station natin. Una. May mga nanghudas na ba sa inyo? <laughs> yeah. Nabinenta ka ng uh, 30 silver pieces or more. Pangalawa, have you been a Judas yourself? Many times with your friends, with, your, with the people who trusted you, we betrayed them. And third, did we ever repent from our betrayals? Or we are still in denial up to this time. We don't recognize what we have done. At least for Judas, he recognized the wrong that he has done. He wanted to repair it. He wanted to make amends for it. He wanted to set it right while he had the time. But when he saw that the events were unfolding very fast, he could not see his Lord being executed. Inunahan niya na. He ended it with hanging himself. So we look at ourselves and we look at Judas and the many times in our lives that we have been betrayed, that we have betrayed, and what did we do about it? And what do you think is the invitation for all of us by Judas? Is it to give up because we have sinned? Is it to lose hope because we have committed a mistake? No matter how grave it is, and we just, you know, lose it together. All together, we lose it and we say to ourselves, there's no more hope for me. There's nothing in it for me. So I quit. I quit. I give up. Nothing more for me. That's it. Yan. Yun ang magandang pagnilayan sa mga panahong ito. Who are the characters in the story of Jesus that we can identify most with? I began and started with, with Judas because many times in our life we experience being betrayed and there are also moments then we ourselves are the betrayer or we ourselves become Judas to our wife, to our husband, to our friend, to our work. We betray people left and right and you know, somehow in our life we don't know how to repair the damage we have caused. Maraming beses po, no? yung, yung pagkakamali natin, laging may mga lethal consequences that are hard to repair. Buti nga po yung daan, eh, di ba? Mabuti pa yung daan, pag may sira, pwede mong i-repair. Eh. Pero yung reputation, yung character, ang hirap i-repair. Relationship that is broken because of betrayal, ang hirap i-repair. And there are many moments that we give up on it. And altogether we say, there's nothing more. There's no more hope in it. So we just say, I give up. How many times have people given up on us? Yeah. But the, 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 you know, ang problema lang kay Judas talaga, 
Hindi niya tiningnan kung gaano uh, ka, uh, kabait ang Diyos, no? He did not. Siguro nung kausap ni Jesus yung 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 ano, yung magnanakaw ng katabi niya, siguro nakikita niya yung mukha ni Judas, yung kanyang kaibigan. Nung hubigi yung magnanakaw sa katabi niya na nasa kanan na uh, remember me when you come into your kingdom. Ang sabi ni Jesus sa kanya, today you will be with me in paradise. Ju- Judas did not hear that. He should have heard that. He could have heard it. Jesus offering life, hope, salvation, redemption to this man who all his life was living in 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 uh, uh, in sin, in uh, living in 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 terms of, of you know of being a thief, of getting what is not his. For, for, you know, for all his life. And Jesus, just like that, never even asking him what your sins are, never even verifying with him na gaano kalaki o gaano kaliit ang kasalanan mo. What he cares about for Jesus is, today you will be with me in paradise. Today I give you redemption. Today I give you hope. And Judas did not allow himself to hear that. He just went on and ended it all and he lost hope in Jesus and he lost hope in himself hindi niya nakita na kaya siyang patawarin ni Lord eh. Jesus could have forgiven him why not because that's what he did to Peter yeah if you go to the story of Peter we know of course Peter he is the closest of the disciples the leader of the band is the leader of the disciples and you know, Peter, how many times did he deny Jesus? He denied him three times. So nakita niyo po yung, you know, three years of friendship, 30 silver pieces of betrayal, three denials of Peter, laging tatlo eh. No? So tingin ko po, ganyan talaga. Pagka may, <laughs> may magtatry doon sa inyo, it comes in threes. Oh, bilangin nyo na lang kung ilan ng... <laughs> you know, si Peter denied Jesus three times. And yet, what did Jesus do to Peter? Rehabilitated Peter in John chapter 21, asking Peter three times, Do you love me? Yes, Lord. Do you love me? Yes, Lord. Do you love me? Yes, Lord. You know that I love you. I know I denied you three times. Kailangan mo pa talaga ipangalandakan sa akin. Tatlong ulit talaga. Para lang gusto sabihin ni Lord kay Peter na you denied me three times but it's okay. I'm, I'm giving you hope. I'm giving you a new chapter to your life. And in fact, denying Jesus three times tapos ang reward niya ay ano? Maging Santo Papa. <laughs> Ikaw no nga ito nag-deny kay Jesus tapos taging Santo Papa ka pa? And that's where you can see the, the overflowing, super abundant mercy of God. Ang lesson po sa atin ng story ni Peter and ni Judas ay you cannot, you cannot and you should never underestimate the boundless mercy of God for you. There is always hope for you. A sinner like us, a sinner like you and me, there is always hope for us. There is always a chance for, you know, for redemption. There is always a chance to get up, to rise, and to move forward in spite of what we, are, what we have become and in spite of what we have done. Amen? Pakasabi sa katabi natin, may pag-asa ka pa. Ha? Hudas ka. May pag-asa ka pa. <laughs> may pag-asa <laughs> There's still hope. There's still hope in us. It's not hopeless. It's not, you know, it's not going to... Don't allow yourself to be Judah, Judaized. <laughs> don't allow yourself to be, to suffer the fate or the, or the, uh, or what happened to, to Judas. Sayang. Sayang. At marami mga tao na ganun. Sayang, ano? Sayang. Uh, pinangunahan niya yung grasya at awa ng Diyos. Parang, if he could just have waited a bit longer. If I were Judas, of course, it's easy for us to say it. Pero if you were Judas, maybe you could have waited a little longer. Kasi three days, mabubuhay yung mama eh. Di ba? Parang, Oh, ba? 
Nag-give up ka agad eh. In three days, mabubuhay naman din siya eh. So, you could have waited a bit longer. But, ito po, uh, ito mga new, new theologians na pwede, new uh, Bible scholars that are saying, nasabi nila, informed by the advances in science and psychology nowadays, Judas could have been saved in the end. Informed by the, you know, by, by the advance, advances in how, what do we understand about despair, depression, and suicide. Informed by the new uh, discoveries. The Bible scholars are saying nowadays, but we think Judas could have been saved also in the end. Because he was not in his right mind already. And in fact, there are many Bible scholars who are saying, it was not really the decision of Judas because Satan entered into him. Meaning, Judas was not in his right mind. Judas was not in his right disposition. So, it was not really willful. It was not really uh, because he was conscious or fully in, uh, in charge of his faculties. There was maybe a moment that Judas lost it in terms of his cognitive and emotional faculties that he was not in control anymore of himself. And, and so his suicide was really more of, a, of an action of a, of a man who has lost it. And he thought that by hanging himself, that was his way out of his guilt. That was his way out of his darkness. And nowadays, that's how we understand suicide. Nowadays, we understand suicide as a disease, not a conscious decision of a person. It's really a darkness that people would say, na, this is the best option for me, so I go for it. So nowadays, ang tawag nila doon ay rehabilitating Judas. They call it the rehabilitation of Judas. They say that it was not lost for Judas in the end. Someone who was called by the Lord to be his disciple, someone who was formed and trained by Jesus for three years, someone who broke bread with Jesus for so long, someone who witnessed the miracles of Jesus left and right, someone who heard the voice of Jesus every day, someone like him, Judas, he could have been given a chance in the end. If the thief at the right of Jesus was given a chance, if Peter was given a chance and the rest of the disciples who abandoned Jesus in his moment of need, nowhere to be found except John, if they were given a chance, why would not Jesus give Judas a chance? And by extension, we can say, why would Jesus not give you and me a chance? So Holy Week is really really a commemoration of the boundless mercy of God. The love of God that is, that, is, that is just overflowing. That it is offered and given to us. Pope Benedict XVI calls it love till the end. Love till the end. Jesus never, never, ever uh, spared us from being a beneficiary of this boundless love and mercy and compassion. Okay pa ho kayo? Yeah. Do na lang muna tayo. And uh, let me end with another figure. Kilala po natin siya bilang Longhino, Longinus. Uh, have you heard of his story? Pumunta po kayo na Marinduque ngayon. Yan, yun meron silang Moriones Festival. Si Longhino, ang ganda rin ng kwento niya, no? It's biblical and extra-biblical. But Longinus or Longhino is the Roman soldier or centurion who was at the foot of Jesus. He was one of the team who executed Jesus. So, isya sa mga pumatay kay Jesus. And if you went to Mass yesterday, at the end of the reading from the Gospel of Mark, there was this declaration of the soldier, the Roman soldier in front of Jesus. After seeing Jesus die, his profession of faith was truly, this was the Son of God. 
a Roman soldier who executed him, witnessing his death, made the first act of faith in the entire Bible. The act of faith is not made by Mary Magdalene, not by Peter, not by James, John, and all that. No. The first act of faith after the death of Jesus was professed by a Roman soldier who killed him. The conversion that happened to Longhino or Longinus was truly this was the Son of God. And by tradition, we are not very sure, but by tradition, it is said that this long Longinus is the same soldier who pierced his side with a lance. To know that he is truly dead, he pierced it with a lance and came out blood and water. Imagine that, no? Imagine that. You are the executioner. You put him to death. And yet, when you pierce his side with a lance, it was still love that was flowing down. And they say, hindi na nasa Bible ito, pero according to tradition, right there and then, Longinus was converted. And he wanted to protect Jesus, even if he was dead. And he insisted that his body should not be broken. He defended Jesus, and he really became so active that his fellow soldiers eventually saw in him something changed in him. Kaya hinabul nila si Longhino. Yeah, sa Moriones Festival, hinahabul nila si Longhino. Hinahanap nila para patayin yung Roman soldier, kasi naging alagad siya ni Jesus. And it is said, again, not in the Bible, but according to tradition, Longinus was blind in one eye. And then, when the blood came out, he was healed by Jesus. The point of the story of Longinus is, he is the executioner. He killed Jesus. Because he could, have been, he could have been one of those that put the nails in his feet and in his arms, in his, in his hands. He could have been one of the soldiers who mocked him, who jeered at him. But at the end of it, he was the first one to declare truly, this was the Son of God. Story of hope. Story of redemption. And that's basically what Holy Week is about. Redemption. No matter how tragic the story is, and no matter how tragic the ending is, the Lord will always offer redemption for all of us. That's why He's called the Redeemer, the Savior, Yeshua, the God who saves. In Jesus we find the God who will save us. Si Judas kaman na mukhang pera, si Longhino kaman na namuhay sa karahasan, ikaw man yung magnanakaw na nasa tabi ni Jesus. If you come nearer to Jesus, if you come to the cross, redemption is at hand. Only in Jesus can we be saved? If you want salvation for yourself, for your family, you have to come to Jesus and be saved by His cross. Amen? Yan. Yan ang kwento ni Jesus at ng mga taong nakapaligid sa Kanya. At kung mapapansin ninyo, Si Judas, si Longhino, yung magnanakaw, puro mga lalaki yan. <laughs> Sorry po kung naging very biased ako. Pero sa mga kababaihan, okay na kayo. Mababait na kayo. Ang pinapaalalahanan ngayon ay tayong mga kalalakihan. Yan. 
Everybody needs to be saved. You can't save yourself. You need to be saved. You need a savior. You need Jesus in your life. So my invitation for all of you, and let me end with this, come to Jesus. You can't save yourself. We are just too weak, you know, to overcome our, our sinfulness and our weaknesses. We are just too weak. Hindi po natin laban, hindi natin pwedeng labanan si Satanas ng mano a mano. Talo tayo. We need a Savior. We need someone who can protect us. We need to cling to Him. Our God who was crucified, but our God who has loved us till the end. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. Thank you, Jesus for offering your life for our sake. Thank you for loving us in spite of our many sins. Thank you for suffering for our behalf, for our sake. We thank you for giving us this day today to, to meditate on your story, to look at the people who journeyed with you in Calvary. We just reflected on some of them, but there were thousands of there of them that day that Passover feast in Jerusalem there were so many of them there there were some who stayed there were many who abandoned you and went on their ways we ask you Lord that this holy week wherever we are and whatever whatever activities we may engage in give us oh Lord a humble heart to acknowledge that, you, that we need you, that we need your forgiveness, that we need the redemption that you offer to us. Bless us, Lord, in our family. Protect us always and guide us at every moment of our life. In our journey in life, O oh Lord, accompany us, protect us, and lead us closer to you. The Lord be with you, and may our loving God bless you all, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Maraming salamat po sa inyong pakikinig, and thank you also for being here in the parish. God bless you. Have a happy Holy Week po sa inyo. Final message. Thank you. 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 Okay. Okay pa ba kayo? Alam niyo tama si Sec Babes, no? Every time, no? This year, sa every year, no? Yung Metro Manila, ah, uh, Metro Pacific Tollways Group, we diligently uh, prepare, no? Diba? For the influx of motorists into our expressways. We check our toll collection system, we, we check the road, we heighten our engagement, diba? we put more personnel into the road, we make sure that we are ready to address the needs of our motorists who will be joining to the provinces and coming back. Pero talking about preparation, sabi ni Areles, Eh, paano yung preparation ninyo spiritually? No? So, last Thursday, we were trying to find a, you know, someone who can, who can help us. So, equally important, today we took care of our spiritual preparedness with this uh, short recollection. A, a pit stop, no? A... Um, a short uh, pause for us.
So sabi ni Father Jason, everybody needs to be saved. Hindi lang yung mga motorista na nadidistress sa road natin. So, the mission of Jesus is to bring life in its fullness. The works of Jesus result in a life of quality and meaning. Tayo lahat in our work, we are living in a time when the quality of life seems to be deteriorating. And um, while we face many serious problems in our personal life and in our professional life, this is uh, what we need no? from, from time to time. So I'm sure we learned a lot from the recollection talk of Father Jason, short but, but sweet. Uh, Father, you took us through the journey and the story of Jesus. Sabi nung wife ko, ngayon lang daw niya naintindihan yung ano. <laughs> because of the imagery that you uh, showed us today. So at this juncture again, uh, we would like to thank you, Father Jason. Father, you have been very gracious in accommodating Metro Pacific Tollways, no? uh, despite your busy schedule and despite the very, very short notice. So, maraming maraming salamat po. So, alam nyo, hindi, hindi kailangan ni Father nung palakpak. No? Alam nyo kung ano yung kailangan niya? Tanamin nyo, ano? <laughs> Si Father merong feeding program no, that uh, was started here in this parish during the pandemic. And it is still going on. No? Uh, ang pangalan ng program na yon ay isang kanin, isang ulam. No? And uh, they do this uh, regularly. So if you find it in your heart to, to help, no, uh, the office of the parish is there in, in the other building. You go and check with Miss Lani. And, you know, kayo na bahala. Marami kayong matutulungan. Okay? So, may we all have a meaningful uh, commemoration of Holy Week. Marami salamat. Thank you, Sir Luigi. Salamat. Picture taking down. <laughs>